Welcome to 101. I'm Steve Adubato. It is my honor to introduce a gentleman you're about to see on camera. He is uh, Bob Carr, the uh, author of a fascinating book called Through the Fires, also the founder of an organization called the Give Something Back Foundation, and uh, the CEO and founder of Heartland Payment Systems. And by the way, you told us in another interview, um, that company sold, one public sold for? Uh, $4.3 billion. Yeah. And by the way, check our website out if you want to find out more about the foundation, the Give Something Back Foundation. Uh, it's worth checking out that interview. But I want to talk about the book. This book, as a student of leadership, someone who writes, teaches, and thinks about leadership a lot, there's a lot of leadership lessons in here as well, in, in this. But what struck me about your book more than anything else is that you're not just some guy who made a ton of money and kept making a ton of money and kept succeeding over and over again. You succeeded and then lost a lot of money and then kept coming back and back and back. Um, where does your tenacity come from? Uh, it comes from not knowing um, something better to do than to try to prove what you're, uh, what you're doing. There, there are serial entrepreneurs. <clears throat> I'm just the opposite. I, I started a business when I was 25 years old, and I hung in there through thick and thin a few times and was able to make something pretty meaningful out of it over a lot, a lot of time. So I just believe <clears throat> in making the best of what, what you can do, and I felt my, my talents were in this one area, and I just wanted, I always felt I could, could keep growing, and there could be more and more done to make Describe things that better and better. Sorry for interrupting, but describe that area. I, I think, you know, my ability, I think, number one, is to be able to motivate people to be uh, on a team that's doing great work, doing good things, helping businesses and helping each other as fellow workers. But you built such a successful company, right? Explain to folks, you know, someone says, oh, well, you, quote, lost it, or, or you, you took this big hit. Explain to folks the coming back part, because that's the part I'm fascinated by. Because there are a whole range of people who do not come back. Right. <clears throat> who basically say, well, that's it. That was some greater force. That's my fate. That's the way it's supposed to be. And that's not how you saw it. Well, I, I didn't see it. You know, the, where we took our huge hit was uh, when the economic downturn came in 08. Right. It turned out, and it was just serendipity, unfortunate for us, that we were breached. And it was a data it, breach. It was a data breach. It was the largest data breach ever at the time. And we were, we were the front page news uh, all over the country for several days. And our, our existence was you know, in peril because we didn't know what was going to happen uh, because we, we, we processed for these very big financial companies, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover. We were sponsored by banks, and we didn't know what they were going to do. And there were 300 companies breached like we were by the same attack vectors, the same criminals, but we were the biggest, and so we got all the press. And uh, we were able to do a couple of things strategically that were the right things to do. And we were able to get through it. And we paid $150 million. I lost personally all my wealth at the time. You lost all your wealth? I lost $300 million one day. I'm sorry, in one day? Yes. It was the day that the market crashed. And our stock went down to below a point where I had a very small margin loan, I thought. But by the time the market um, went down so far, and that together with the breach, it brought the stock under a place where I had to basically give it away to pay off a margin loan. Do you ever ask yourself the biggest lesson you learned in all that about, I'm going to use the word, my favorite word, leadership? The lesson without a question is do the right thing. And it's easy to say, but it's very meaningful. Um, we were at a point where I think a lot of other companies were in a crisis. And all the advice from the experts was, don't talk about this. You know, just let us take care of it. Refer it to the lawyers. And I absolutely refused to do that, because the culture of our company was, and especially with our employees and customers, is to be forthright, to be transparent. And by That's way, who we out. were. Sorry for interrupting again. Explain so folks understand that the company's basic 
service was? We're a processor of electronic payments, uh, credit card payments, at gas pumps and at merchant locations and so on. So the kind of data breach you're talking about, devastating. It's very devastating, huge. Millions of card numbers were stolen. So, so quote, lawyer up. Get the lawyers to handle it. You right. say nothing as the leader, as the CEO. That was the advice. That's not what we did. Did you, did you tell, did you tell your lawyers, did you tell those other folks, no, I'm handling this? I did. They weren't Did they say happy. you're crazy? They told me not only was I crazy, but they warned me that I could be the reason, I could be causing my fellow workers to go to jail if I said the wrong thing. The intimidation factor was the most incredible intimidating factor I've, I've seen. It, it was amazing. Where did your strength come from and who was it that was closest <clears throat> to you saying, Bob, you're doing the right thing, stay the course? My conscience it was the one, was what stayed the course. I, I've been through, my, you know, as I talk about in the very early part of the book, I learned what it was like to be involved uh, with intimidating individuals early on in my life. And I learned that at some point you've just got to stand up to it and do what you think is right. And we did that. We had an all-hands meeting. We admitted that we were breached. We went out to our customers. We told them that we were. Yeah. And then we proceeded to bring encryption to America. And we proceeded to, find, to form an organization that is a, co a cooperative effort of the different processors mm. to share information about what was the bad guys were trying to do to all of us. Yeah, by the way, in this book, um, Bob also talks about some really personal things. You talk about your dad? My dad, yeah. Abusive? Yes, alcoholic abusive. Very, not, not an uncommon thing at all. Make you uh, tougher? Were you tougher because of that? I was tougher in the situations, um, uh, in some situations. I've never really been in a lot of fist fights and that type of thing. <laughs> but when right is right and wrong is wrong, you've got you've to take a position and fight for what you believe in. I learned that a long time ago, and it's, it's uh, the reason we're sitting here talking, frankly. Your mother was a night shift waitress. That's right. She teach you working real hard? Uh, you know, my dad worked hard and my mom worked hard. Working hard is not an uncommon thing in this world. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very common thing. My mom said, work hard, keep your nose to the grindstone and everything is going to work out. And I said, Mom, that, that's not really the way it works. <laughs> but she and I, had that, we had that disagreement. But real quick, the ethical piece. You, were, right. you talk extensively right. about business ethics in here. Right. I mean, by the I way, do. the name of the book is Through the Fires with uh, Bob, Robert Owen Carr um, with Dirk Johnson. Yes. I want to make that clear as well. Um, you're very critical. Of financial institutions, unethical business practices. Why? Because they take advantage of the poorest victims out there. The, the vulnerable people are taken advantage of by very smart people who go to the best schools in the world. For example? And for example, uh, the, the, the fact that there are software algorithms written by ingenious people to maximize the, net, the, net, the NSF fees for bad checks. And, and who do those go against? Those go against the very poorest people in the country who can least afford them. What has happened? Well, you've been saying these things for a while. For a long time. What kind of reaction have you gotten from the leaders in the financial community? Um, a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, that's great, Bob. You're right. You know, keep going. But when it comes to a public uh, endorsement that there needs to be, a, that, that these practices need to come to an end, very little support, unfortunately. Um, in the other segment we had you uh, here, we were talking a lot about your organization, the Give Something Back Foundation. <clears throat> Do you believe that there's enough giving back on the part of those who have the most? I, I'm imp very impressed with a number of very wealthy people and what they do. There's really some amazing work being done out there. And frankly, Steve, I think a lot of the problem is that People want to do good, but they don't know how to do it. And they, they're looking for ways to really do something meaningful, rather than just writing a check at the, in December you know, to 25 different organizations that they can't really track what happened to that money. The thing about our foundation is we put specific kids yeah. through college. 
and you can see these kids change and grow. It's just you track it's them. the most. You track them. You, yes, you absolutely. Them. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Last question. Um, you have another book planned. Well, we have the second edition of this book coming out. We ran out of copies of this <laughs> uh, printing, and we're doing a second edition, which is being distributed by my alma mater. I'm very proud to say the University of Illinois Press. And then another book is uh, will be coming out later this year called uh, Working Class to College, where we really talk about the program. Working we, Class to College? Yes. It's about the program? It's about our foundation program, which is working very well, and uh, we want to try to expand it over the years. Do you get more satisfaction out of helping the kids that you've helped go to college succeed in their lives than you have being incredibly, amazingly successful as a businessman? Uh, the two things that make, have given me the most pleasure in life is one, having 4,600 employees, 87% of whom think the company is a great place to work. My parents didn't like their jobs. I grew up in a world where people didn't like their jobs. They came home at 5 o'clock, and, uh, uh, and the other thing is putting these kids through college. It's just so gratifying to see that happen. And uh, I write about that in the book and talk about the, the happiest moment in my life wasn't ringing the bell to open the New York Stock Exchange. That wasn't. It was getting that survey back that said 87% of my people thought we were a great place to you, work. You gotta do this for me because we don't have 80, we don't have all those thousands of people. We have a bunch of people here in a crew, a great crew here, a great team behind the scenes in the control room and lots of folks uh, that are part of our team. And they're not, I'm sure they're not always happy with me. Um, stop snickering in my earpiece right now as I say <laughs> that. The key to getting people to be, to really like their work and where they work is they have to feel like they're doing something worthwhile um, it, when they come to work every day, that they're making the world a better place. What about how you treat them? It's, a, it, 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 it's imperative that we treat our people with respect, and we really try to do that. We're not always successful. There's 13% that don't, <laughs> don't, don't think we're a great place to work, um, so we can't forget them. Uh, the name of the book is uh, Through the Fires, an American business story of turbulence triumph. And giving back, um, Bob, I want to thank you for joining us. We appreciate it, and uh, and so many young people who are benefiting from uh, this foundation. I can't even comprehend not just what they're going to achieve, but way more importantly, how much more they're going to give back they, to so many others. They are absolutely are. I'm it's, I'm really proud of our kids. They're terrific. The millennials are okay. They're good people, and I. So thank you very much. No, that's encouraging. Thank you. Stay yeah, right thank there. Thank you. We'll be right back, right after this.